Good evening, comedy. I'm late. It's very nice to be here, enjoying my adult freedoms. Didn't have a lot of freedom when I was growing up, mainly because I spent most of my childhood and my adolescence at an all-boys boarding school. I'm not ashamed of that. It made me the man I am today. Insecure, repressed, and very good at ancient Greek. <laughs> Couldn't pleasure a lady, but I could translate the Odyssey. <laughs> and at the end of the day, which is the more transferable life skill? <laughs> For five years as a teenager, I went just, not just to any all-boys boarding school, probably the least popular all-boys boarding school in the UK. Uh, I went to a school called Eton College. Uh, it's not a popular school, if you're not aware of it. It's a school very associated with a certain kind of toxic privilege. Uh, a friend of mine summed it up. He said, uh, think about people who went to Eton, Ivo. Uh, you're kind of like white people with dreadlocks. You're not all wankers, but enough of you are sort of safe to assume. <laughs> And I'm scanning the audience to check I haven't offended any white dreads. <laughs> Last thing I want to do tonight is alienate the Rasta community. <laughs> God knows they've been good to me over the years. <laughs> if you fancy a different sprint, think of us like, uh, like Australian cricketers, yeah? Meant to be some sort of elite, but really just silly little boys tampering with our balls. <laughs> now that is a flimsy premise. Is it a flimsy premise getting more dated by the day, but I wrote it on the plane and I'm very proud. <laughs> Look at me go, a little bit of topical satire in between dinner and Captain Phillips, don't mind if I do. <laughs> I went to an all-boys boarding school for the first time uh, when I was seven years old in the UK. I went there for three years, uh, and then I started at Eton when I was 13 years old. I can feel the tension in the room, people going, you've skipped three years, I felt. Please fill in the mysterious gap. I'm glad you noticed, glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Three years, at a strange interlude. My dad got a job in Sydney. We moved as a family to Australia. What a, what a time in my life that was. Then we returned to England, and I went to Eton in a situation I would very much describe as not ideal. <laughs> I loved living in Australia. Now, I don't want to appear too sort of sycophantic towards my Australian host, but it's clearly a better quality of life, yeah? People, nicer. Weather, nicer. Football standards, much, much lower, which actually played very nicely into my hands. <laughs> Went from D's substitute to A's captain. All I had to do was emigrate and call it soccer. <laughs> I felt sick, but I felt proud. <laughs> I loved it. I love. I was a. I was. I was a young man in, in the big city. Yeah. I, I was living at home. I was getting the bus to school. It was still an all boys school. Some things never changed, but there were girls nearby. <laughs> and I was going to talk to them as soon as my voice broke and my entire personality changed. <laughs> all ready to start living my life to the max. Um, now, I'm aware, I'm talking about Sydney here. I'm aware there's a sort of Sydney-Melbourne rivalry. It's been a, a sort of treat to get to, to talk to people about that while being out here in Melbourne. A lot of people, a lot of people having, a, having a go at Sydney. My favourite one, uh, this little pop, someone said, the uh, thing about Sydney is, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, like a supermodel. Yeah? Be beautiful to look at, uh, but once you get to know it, there's nothing there. <laughs> and all I would say to that, what a relatable analogy. <laughs> If there's one bane of my adult life, it's getting to know supermodels who turn out to be shallow. <laughs> I've, I've had to change my Tinder preferences just to throw them off the scent. No supermodels, please, no time wasters. <laughs> I had the best life. I loved it, uh, uh, and then I went back to Eton. Devastating. Dad got a job back in the UK, and I moved back, and everything changed. Goodbye, board shorts, hello, tailcoat. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, Triple J. Hello, Schubert. <laughs> Goodbye, endemic societal racism. Hello, endemic societal racism. <laughs> I was on the receiving end of that, even to a very minor degree, because I've been teased in Australia for three years because of my English accent. Towards the end, uh, developed a, a minor Aussie twang, went to Eton, got bullied about that for the next five years. <laughs> Surely the only schoolboy in the world to have been called Pommy and Skippy in consecutive terms. <laughs> I hope that's not too offensive by proxy, then that's still the, uh, the Aussie slam being peddled by English boarding school boys, Skippy. I was called Skippy, and I was constantly being told to go and rescue small boys from down wells. <laughs> there was no well at Eton, they were having me on. <laughs> there were two swimming pools, one indoor, one outdoor, both of them supervised by very vigilant lifeguards. <laughs> Nobody was drowning in those pools, and if someone did, a fictional kangaroo would be very low down the priority list. <laughs> But I had one weapon, one weapon in my back pocket against the bullies. If anyone pushed it too far, I had my, my trump card. That trump card? Neighbours spoilers. 
That's right, my friends. I had all the neighbour spoilers. Now, in 2018, I believe the two countries are operating in perfect neighbour sync. And also, in the digital age, you could look up anything you want to online. This was 2003. Australia was six months ahead and we didn't have internet at Eton. I was a powerful man. <laughs> I don't know if that comes as some sort of news flash to you, how popular Neighbours is in the UK and specifically at Eton. What a, what a reassurance about the potential of the global brand. We love Neighbours at Eton. What a surreal mental picture, just a load of pampered teenage aristos keeping their fingers crossed that Toadie gets his life back together. <laughs> we cared so much about Toadie. The school day was practically designed around Neighbours. The show was on at 1.45. Um, there was a 20 minute break around that time between lunch and sport. Some people had a wank, but the sensible ones watched Neighbours <laughs> and saved the wank for later. There was a, even a repeat viewing in the UK at 5.30pm for those of us who really wanted to ingest the subtext and secondary themes. <laughs> and I would sit there at the back of the room, the most powerful man in that room, stroking my metaphorical cats, just laughing to myself, going, that's right, guys, I've seen this episode before. If it was 5.30pm, I'd seen it twice. <laughs> Carl and Susan are being pretty civil to each other. <laughs> Let's see how long this one lasts. <laughs> And if anyone came too close, anyone threatened me too much, I'd say, keep your distance, lads. None unless you want to hear about the refurb Harold's planning for the cafe. <laughs> Watch out, Lassiters. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> then after six months, the UK caught up, spent the next five years with my head down the toilet, but it was worth it. <laughs> so brief, but so sweet. I spent a lot of time on my own at uh, school as a teenager, a lot of time on my own in my room playing video games. Not proper video games, we weren't allowed those at Eton back in the day. So my teenage years were playing the video games that came free with the computers. And let me tell you what a rock and roll mid noughties existence that was. Those were long afternoons on my own. I spent playing Minesweeper, playing pinball, trying to scroll down all the way to the bottom of Microsoft Excel. <laughs> Not strictly a video game, but if you're lonely enough, it still felt like an achievement. I'm proud to stand here in front of you all as an adult and boast that I've completed Excel and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> that I've gone where few mortals dare to tread, all the way down, all the way right. <laughs> Written my name in that bottom right-hand Excel cell. <laughs> Spent a moment just hovering, hovering over Control P, just imagining the carnage. <laughs> Did I have the balls to print off the entirety of Excel on the school paper supply? I didn't in the end, but the thought alone gave me a bone, a best day of my life. Ladies and gents, this has been an absolute treat. Thank you so much for having me. I've been Ivo Graham. Good night.